December Solstice Observations, Flat Earth and Globe Earth, Part 2, Azimuth of Sunrise and Sunset. This video is going to borrow some content from the other Equinox video of the same name, Azimuth of Sunrise and Sunset, but this video is going to have a ton of calculations that weren't present in the last one, so brace yourselves. This video, all you need is a east-west street or a straight street, times of sunrise and sunset, and the data gatherings will be very, very simple. The hard part will be the calculations. So preparation and tools. We're first going to do some explorations in Google Maps. What you're looking for is an east-west street or any straight street in your neighborhood, preferably with curbs or sidelines. You want to be able to see a clear view of the sunrise and sunset from this location. You'll also need the time of sunrise and sunset. And when you go to make your measurement, you're going to need any camera and a yardstick and a protractor. When you're in Google Maps, you have the little street view guy, which you can drag onto the map, and all the streets that are available are glowing in, in blue. Then you can take a look at the photos and see if you have a good view of the horizon. You can click on the left and right arrows to align the compass. You also want to look up sunrise and sunset times of the solstice. You can use suncalc.org, or you can use timeanddate.com, or you can use a local uh, websites such as the news website which usually has a weather page and the sunrise sunset is located there. Making a careful observation. So at the time of sunrise and sunset on the solstice you want to find the exact azimuth or compass bearing of sunrise or sun sunset. So what you are looking for is the exact moment of sunrise or sunset. Uh, this is a nice photo but we can't clearly see uh, the sun so we can't actually pin the azimuth. This one shows the exact moment uh, where the sun is peeking over the edge, but it's the edge of a building, not the horizon. So you just want to be careful. You try to, try to have a good view of the horizon when you do this. When you see the, the sunrise or when you see the sunset, try to angle your yardstick so that it is pointing exactly at the sun. Then you can use your protractor against the curb and then measure the angle. This is... Uh, why you want an east-west curb so you can kind of measure the angle very easily. Or you can take a photo uh, from overhead. And when I say overhead, just aim your camera straight down at your yardstick, which is placed near the curb. Now, what happens if you couldn't find an east-west street, but you were able to find a straight street? So let's say we had a photo taken at that intersection. Township Line Road is perfectly straight for a good bit. And then here's an example of the photo looking down at the sidewalk. So what do you do here? All you need to do is align the photo with the map, and then you can actually get the azimuth of the sunrise. Use a protractor and get the azimuth. Whatever you do, make sure that you're doing the math correctly. Uh, 90 degrees is due east and 270 is due west. So usually finding the azimuth involves adding and subtracting. You just want to make sure you're getting the right angle. Uh, just double check your math. So. Does your azimuths indicate a globe earth or a flat earth? We shall see. On the globe earth model, at the December solstice, the North Pole is tilted away 23.4 degrees. This means that the Tropic of Capricorn is receiving direct rays from the sun. In the flat earth map, the sun is simply above the Tropic of Capricorn. So now let's take a look at a flat earth versus a globe earth analysis. We'll start with the flat earth. All you need is uh, uh, the North Pole location, your location, and the path of the sun above the Tropic of Capricorn for whatever map you choose. It does not matter which map you pick, which flat earth map. So there's the Abizaid map, the Ferguson map, there's a bunch of other maps, both historical and more recent. And the most popular map is the Gleason's map. But what the Gleason's is, is an equidistant azimuthal projection. So we're going to use the, that projection here for our analysis. So here's our plan of attack. We first have to get a couple of principles out of the way. One is that degrees of latitude are not a measure of angle, but rather of distance. And we're going to call this distance land degrees. From the North Pole to the ice wall is 180 land degrees. And we want to figure out how many land degrees your location is from the North Pole. You then need to locate the proportion of the sun's circuit above the Tropic of Capricorn that is providing sunshine to your location. Then you're going to place endpoints for sunrise and sunset. Lastly, we're going to analyze that triangle that's formed, 
North Pole to Sunrise Sun to your location. That'll be a triangle, and that's how we're going to figure out the azimuth. So, the first principle is the degrees of latitude are not a measure of angle, but rather distance. So we're going to call these land degrees. So the North Pole is 90 land degrees from the equator. The ice wall is 90 land degrees from the equator as well. So it turns out that from the North Pole to the ice wall is 180 land degrees. And you could place your location anywhere on this continuum. So you want to figure out how many land degrees your location is from the North Pole. So if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, it's, it's uh, 90 minus your latitude. If you live in the Southern Hemisphere, it's 90 plus your latitude. And here are two examples, New York City and Sydney, Australia. So next, we're going to figure out the proportion of the sun's circuit above the Tropic of Capricorn that's providing sunshine for your location. So the key here is that the sun is doing one circuit of the Tropic of Capricorn in 24 hours. That's a key. It goes 360 degrees in 24 hours. But then you're going to take a look at your sunrise and sunset data, and you're going to figure out what proportion of this is lit for you. So here's the sunrise and sunset, and you can calculate how long the day is. In this case, it is 559 minutes. And then we just take a proportion. There's 1,440 minutes in a day. So 559 over 1440 is 39%. And then figure out what percent, what that percent is of 360. Turns out it's 140 degrees. So there's 140 degrees of sunshine for Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. That's where I got my, my data from. So we're going to turn the map so that Phoenixville is lined up with the North Pole. And there's our 140 degrees. Sunrise on the right and sunset on the left. So then we're going to analyze the triangle that's formed from the North Pole to the Sunrise Sun to our location. So again, here's Phoenixville. And we're going to zoom in a little bit. So we got the North Pole, the Sunrise Sun, and Phoenixville. It forms a triangle. So how are we going to analyze this triangle? Well, ultimately, we want to find the azimuth of sunrise. So again, it's the number of degrees from due north. That's what azimuth is. Uh, the north, uh, due north is zero degrees azimuth. So we want to figure out the, uh, the, that lower left angle. So how do, we, how do we do this? Well, what do we know? We know how many land degrees we are from the North Pole because Phoenixville is at 40 degrees north latitude. We also know how many land degrees it is from the North Pole to sunrise because we know the exact latitude of uh, the Tropic of Capricorn. So we figure out R for that number of land degrees. And then lastly, we know angle theta because it is exactly half of the uh, of degrees of sunshine. In this case, it's theta is 70. So if you remember from geometry, if you have a triangle and you know the side and then the included angle and then another side, you could figure out all the rest of the sides and angles. So we're going to use the law of cosines twice to do this. Figure out, use the law of cosines to find the third side and then use the law of cosines to find the angle closest to the sun. Once you know that angle, you can use the fact that the angles, the three angles of any triangle adds up to 180 degrees. And this will give us our final angle, which is uh, phi. So what does phi mean? It means that that is the sunrise azimuth. In this case, it's 84 degrees azimuth from Phoenixville on the December solstice. There is a symmetrical measurement on the sunset side of the house because sunrise and sunset are symmetrical. So we can simply take 360 degrees and subtract 84 to get the sunset azimuth. Now these calculations might have seen, seemed tedious, so I've made a calculator for you. Uh, all you need to do is put in your latitude. You can use degrees as a decimal or degrees, minutes, and seconds. Um, pick your hemisphere, north or south, and then enter in your sunrise and sunset time. And then the calculator will do a bunch of intermediate calculations, and these are copied straight out of the slideshow. Um, you can, you can uh, watch the slideshow again and then take note of how these, how these things are formed. Lastly, we get phi, which is the angle of azimuth at sunrise. But then we want the angle of sunrise and sunset, so we subtract uh, phi from uh, 360 to get that. So there we have our two uh, azimuths of sunrise and sunset for the Flat Earth Gleason uh, map. Next, we're going to do a globe Earth analysis. Now, if you thought the math was hard, um, just you wait. We're going to be bringing in the trig uh, pretty heavy on this one. So here is a map of uh, an observer who's at a moderate latitude. 
he has the June solstice path of the sun, the equinox path of the sun, and then lastly, here is the path of the sun on the December solstice. So ultimately, we want to find the angle of azimuth of sunrise. So we're going to simply take our protractor, put it down on the ground, and we're going to measure the angle that is formed from our observer to the sunrise location um, on that protractor. So here's our plan. We're first going to analyze the 3D view of the path of the sun in the sky relative to latitude. And we've already started that. Step two is going to be to analyze a side view. We're going to use some trig to make some measurements. And then we're going to project these measurements onto a top view or a bird's eye view. And then we'll use trig to find the azimuth. So here's the 3D view. And we've already uh, talked about some of this. But one thing is that the north celestial pole uh, has an angle from the horizon that is equal to your latitude. This is in the globe Earth model. So if you turn around and face south, the solar noon on the equinox will be 90 minus your latitude. And that's what we did on the uh, solstice. If you were following along in September, we, um, we paid attention to this angle, 90 minus your latitude. So let's transition to a side view. And the side view uh, looks very similar to the 3D view. We've got our location, and then we've got the sun paths for the two solstices and the equator. And uh, left and right is the north-south um, angles on the compass. Now the right-hand line is the December solstice sun path. And then where that line hits the horizon is the, the sunrise sunset point. Now these three lines are parallel sun paths and I want to make a distinction. We're not talking about the parallel rays coming from the sun. We're talking about parallel paths of the sun as it's traveling through the sky. And this is because the sun is not actually moving at all. It is the earth that is rotating. So in the globe earth model the earth rotates and the sun appears to rotate uh, around the sky because of this um, because of the Earth's rotation. So these are parallel lines. Now remember, theta was 90 minus our latitude, but if these three lines are parallel, we could label all these angles theta. Next, uh, because the solstice are 23.4 degrees away from the equinox, we can label these angles uh, plus or minus 23.4 degrees. Now if you remember from geometry, when you have a transversal that crosses two parallel lines, alternate interior angles are congruent. So we can label that left-hand angle 23.4. We also have congruent triangles formed, which gives us the fact that these parallel lines are equidistant. Now, if we look at the green line where the thetas are, if the three parallel lines are, are um, equally spaced, then we can have angle, or I'm sorry, uh, measurement segment X uh, in both of those locations. So we're going to be trying to figure out how long x is, because that's going to help us find our angle of azimuth of the sunrise. So how do we figure out x? Well, let's form a triangle. The first thing is we're going to arbitrarily label this segment 1. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what number we pick, but we're going to pick 1, because then that makes it a unit circle. It makes the trig a lot easier. So we now have a triangle with two angles labeled and two sides labeled. One of the sides is labeled x. So we use the law of sines and then we're going to solve for x. So x is 23.4 degrees divided by, I'm sorry, the sine of 23.4 degrees divided by the sine of the quantity 90 minus your latitude. So we're going to file this uh, for, for future reference when we go to the top view. We're going to need to know what x is. Okay, so now let's transition to a top view. Before we do so, I want you to keep your eye on this intersection. So that's the location of sunrise on the December solstice. So that's, that's the most important dot on this entire diagram. So let's go uh, top view. So again, if we lay a compass rose down, we want to find the angle of azimuth or the bearing of that yellow highlighted region. Again, we're looking straight down, bird's eye view. So we can form another right triangle, and this one has a, a leg that is the same length as x. Okay, we've marked x in the previous diagram. Also, the radius has not changed. The radius is still 1. And so we're going to mark that one acute angle, d. And we're going to call d the angle of southward deflection from due east. Okay, so we have a triangle. Um, two segments are marked. 
a one's a 90 degree angle and then one angle is marked, which means we can use sine. The sine of D is X over one, so therefore D is the arc sine of X. But remember what X is off to the side, we're gonna substitute in for X. So we, let, we now have a formula for D. So what are we gonna to do to find the azimuth? We simply need to add 90 plus D or subtract 90, uh, I'm sorry, 270 minus D. That'll give us our azimuth of uh, sunrise and sunset. Again, we can turn to our azimuth calculator and it does all these calculations behind the scenes. You need your latitude and I'm just showing you this this case we're putting in latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So you can go to a website such as latlong.net and put in your, your town uh, and get a more specific uh, latitude. The interesting thing is in the globe model, the hemisphere does not matter. You could literally select northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, but your angles of sunrise and sunset will, will not change um, for the calculations. So the calculations are pretty straightforward. We start off with a latitude in decimal form, and we simply plug that in, and uh, the D is the arc sign. Uh, so it's really just a one-step calculation uh, without all the intermediate steps. And so lastly, we can figure out what the two azimuths of sunrise and sunset are on the globe Earth model. So quick summary of the flat Earth. Um, we're going to pick your own map or model. You're going to trace a path of the sun above the Tropic of Capricorn. You're going to find the sunset and sunset, I'm sorry, sunrise and sunset times, and you'll calculate this portion of the path uh, that's in sunshine. Then this will give you the location of the sunrise sun. Then you'll measure the azimuth angle from your location. Subtract that from 360 to get this sunset azimuth. Globe Earth summary. Remember that on the December solstice, the path of the sun is a tilted circle, which is dependent on your latitude. And this path is 23.4 degrees southward and parallel to the path on the equinox. And this is really important because we essentially have a circle that is tilted in the, in the sky that intersects the circle of your horizon. So you're going to use trigonometry to find where this circle intersects the circle of your horizon. So here's the full uh, spreadsheet. And again, it is available online. The link's in the description. And feel free to, uh, to play around with the numbers. YouTube user Cara Diane has set up message boards if you would like to share your results. And so feel free to share the azimuths of your sunrise and sunset. And when we say share your azimuths, we mean what you actually witnessed. Uh, what, what did you see with your own eyes? Uh, what azimuths the sun rose and the sun set? And also please share your latitudes so that people can, can make sense of your numbers. The third and final video in this series will be on the path of the sun. And all you'll need is a shadow stick sundial. Please remember what Morrissey uh, advises us. It's so easy to hate, but it does take strength to be gentle and kind. Thank you.